Hey guys, Money Man 300 back for some more Forza 5 videos here and gotta, haven't done a, a tuning guide in a while and what I wanted to do is do a few specific ones. I wanted to do one for front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive and I'm just going to call them a 10 minute tuning guide. And what this is, is to give you a quick way to get a quick tune onto a car so that you can get on to adjusting and fine tuning it. So this is going to be kind of a variation of, you know, I have a base tuning video out there. I have tuning guides and how to tune each of the individual pieces in there. Uh, but what I want to do is kind of, kind of revisit that and give you a really quick way to get a solid tune and get you on the track and racing without spending, you know, tons and tons of time tuning. So let's hop right into it. I already have the build down. Um, just real quick, um, for those of you that don't know, you, you need to make sure you have all, at a minimum all your adjustable parts. Those adjustable parts are, starting here, you need the Forza front bumper. So you need Forza front bumper there. And you need, uh, well, that's not, hang on. And the Forza rear wing. So that's your adjustable arrow. You have to have those. Uh, if we move on over into the drivetrain, you need at least, in order to adjust your final drive ratio, and that's not always the case. Uh, on this car, it just happens to be because it's kind of a free upgrade. A lot of times we'll run a stock transmission and not adjust that, but if you want that adjustable final drive ratio, you need the sport transmission. And if you want to go adjust individual gears, which I really don't do very often, almost never, uh, you'll want the race transmission. So a uh, minimum of sport transmission on that one. Let's go back. Oh, wait, I missed one piece in there. You need a uh, race differential in here, right there. You need the race differential to have a uh, two-way differential uh, adjustable. And then you'll need race brakes, race springs, race front and rear roll bars. So those are all the parts. In order to get in and do all the tuning that we're going to talk about, you need to have those parts on there. You will not be able to do the adjustment. So uh, let's hop into it real quick here. So tires, I usually start right around 28. Um, in a front wheel drive car, I might go, uh, like 28 and a half and go slightly more or the other way around 28, 28 and a half. So I usually start there, go 28, 28. That's fine. A lot of that's personal preference. Um, adjust my final drive ratio. I usually don't adjust this much until I drive it to see where it's at. But one just really super quick rule of thumb is I try to line it up so that, um, the last gear there kind of points up to the top corner. So uh, in this case, you're, and, and just knowing this car is going to want to be in the 4.3 to 4.5 range, somewhere in there. Uh, you can also look at, and I mentioned this in uh, how to set your final drive ratio, look at your 0 60 number and kind of adjust off that to try to find the best ones in your range. So if I look at 6.075, you know, and I'm still at 6.075, so I'm probably in a pretty good spot right in here, 6.075, so pretty good. Um, you can play around with it and see if you can get a little bit more one way or another out of that. But that gets you a good start and just get you on the track and, and testing it. You can tune it for that last straightaway and things like that and tune so you're not shifting in the middle of corners and things like that later on. Uh, alignment, I generally speaking, and this is front, and that, this is where we're going to get into talking about some of the front wheel drive. I like to put a bunch of camber on front wheel drive cars. So I'm going to start at a minimum of 3.5 and 3.0. I may even start higher, may even go as high as 3.8 and three five or something like that but i'm going to start right in there i also like to put some toe front wheel drive cars are notorious for understeering you get that torque steer when you when you get on it so we're going to add some toe to this and i'm going to do two in the front and the back now this is a, you know, most of the time when you're tuning a front wheel drive car it's in lower classes you're going to be in d class c class maybe b class they start to fall off there and you're going to you're going to be tuning them for grip. Um, they're generally not going to be just straight up speed cars. That's usually reserved for your all wheel drive and your, and especially their rear wheel drive cars. But if you are tuning for a little bit more speed, as is the case for maybe the Celica um, in D class or some cars like that, that you're going to be running on maybe Indy GP, you're going to run on the Alps, maybe a little more momentum track than a turning track. Um, Prague is another example of that and um, Nür the, uh, Nürburgring, you might want to take the toe out of here. The toe will slow you down in the straightaway, but it's going to help in the turns. So in that's the case, you might want to zero that out. But I'm going to go two and two. Generally speaking, I'm going to leave this caster angle alone at 5.0. You can try some things like dropping it down here to three, even, as far, even dropping it all the way out um, to balance out if you go really high in that camber. 
I generally just leave it at five and you can come back in. Um, I encourage you to test it, try it at one and then come back at five and see what you see, what, see if you notice a difference, see if it feels any better one way or another. It's kind of how I learned some of these things, you know, try those extremes and then see what it feels like. So this is going to be my starting point on my alignment. My roll bars going to be a big adjustment here on a front wheel drive car, especially in D class. I'm just going to go ahead and start at one. You know, I, I've messed around with them enough to know that uh, this thing understeers and I hate understeer with a passion. If this is just too much, if you're just getting sideways in here, maybe you can come back up and get in around five to eight, somewhere in there, but you're going to want the front roll bars low. So I'm going to go one and then I'm going to put this somewhere around 25 to 28. So I'm going to start at one and 26 here. That seems like a decent number. Maybe let's go 27, one and 27 and just start with that. No science in this deal, right? And we're just, this is how I'm going to start with most of my front wheel drive cars in the lower classes. Just, we're just going to start here and then I would adjust off of that. Uh, springs, what I want to do is site middle this up. What I mean by this is eh, put this at about 50%, you know, somewhere in here is about right for the front. Uh, the rear is already somewhere in there. I'm going to start them off about the same, both the front and the rear. Basically, this is oversteer tuned because I, I, I'm going to have... Uh, my weight distribution a little bit towards the front because of the engine anyway. I didn't look at the weight distribution on this, but uh, and the fact that it's front wheel drive. So I'm going to leave them about the same. This is basically understeer tuned anyway. You can do whatever you want with this. Typically speaking, you're going to want to go ahead and drop this all the way out and then raise it up if you need to. If you find it that you're bottoming out, you know, and you'll notice bottoming out by you can see sparks or when you hit a turning strip and it just the thing just completely loses curls probably because you bottomed out you can also look at um in in the telemetry in your test drive see if the shocks show that they're bottoming out and you can raise it as as needed so we'll do that i'm going to come into dampening or dampening damping and i want to bring this up a little bit i'm going to go about you know somewhere around 10 and maybe somewhere around uh you know somewhere around here a little bit lower in the front but somewhere around the 10 number and somewhere around 11 in the rear and then down here i'm going to be maybe around one and a half and i kind of like in the front wheel drive to have just a little bit more bump we'll go yeah we'll go one eight and then just something slightly higher than that so that again anytime you have the rear stiffer than the front it's what we we'll call oversteer tuned and that's what you want to do with the front wheel drive car you want to oversteer tune it to try to eliminate that understeer um, so we'll do that one eight two three that looks good to start um lower classes generally going to take all this out except except in a front wheel drive car so this is my normal front wheel drive car i like to add all the again get all that downforce on the front if you're making a speed car you may want to take this out again it, again indy gp nurburgring some of those that, that front wheel drives will do okay, uh, uh, what we call speed front wheel drive in the D and, and C classes. You could probably do, want to take that downforce out, but I'm trying to make this uh, turn really well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put 100 uh, full downforce in the front and take everything I can out of the rear. Brakes. This is a preference. I generally though am starting um, at 51, 52, 53, and I like you know a little bit higher. I like to go about 100 and 30, 140. So if that's a preference for you. Now, when you are checking, you want to check your brakes. You want to get out there and you can do this in telemetry. You can look at your tire temperatures, get your tires warm, you know, get a nice long straightaway and, and, and then hit the brakes and see where your skid is. Are you getting skid in the front first, the rear first? And you can, what I say by look at your tire temperatures, which tire, which ones are heating up quicker? Is it putting more pressure on your front, on your rear, and then balance as needed. Now with the slider, and I've mentioned it in my brake tuning video, the more this is percentage to the rear so 52 percent means i'm putting 52 percent of it to the rear so if i find that the rear end is breaking loose before the front and now this is this is non abs tuning by the way it's different you're going to have to do this differently you're going to have to look at it differently if you're using abs i, I don't use uh, abs so this is non abs specific uh, your numbers may look different if you're using abs but we go 52 percent to the front if my if the rear is breaking loose i want to drop that up i want to go to 51 50 49 until i get it balanced same said if, I, if i'm if the front is breaking loose before the rear then i want to go the other direction i want to go 53 54 until i get that balance and i want to test it two different ways i'm going to test it by jamming on the brakes in the middle of a straight 
And I also want to test it in a trail break situation, which means I'm dr breaking into a turn, but breaking and turning in at the same time is really is really what that means. And just see if it's stable going in, or if w when I try to turn and break, if the car just won't turn and tries to go straight, that means I got too much to the front. I need to add percentage here. If I'm turning and when I hit the brakes, the back end breaks loose and I skid out, then I'm going to lower this number. So that's how I'm going to handle my braking differential. Um, I like to raise the differential here. This is in. You know, again in the lower classes, and I'm gonna go maybe about 70, and I bring this up to about 10, um, and that, that's really again that really helps me to um, to lock a little bit quicker in the front so that I get um, so that I get it to to turn. Is it feels like it turns faster? Again, play with this and find what works for you because this is pretty specific based on how you how you use throttle control. I like to have the front wheel drive a little bit higher in this case. So um, this is the number that I'll start with and I'll adjust off of there. So these are all the numbers. So that's it. That took me all of, you know, maybe about five minutes, um, you know, five to eight minutes. It's under 10 minutes. You can tune in 10 minutes. And what I'll do is you want to get a quick test drive then. So let's apply that setup. Let's, uh, you know, let's find us a track that's a bit turny. I kind of like to use, you know, for turning tracks. Laguna Seca is always fun, that first turn. You know, it just gives me a, a few different turns. You get the corkscrew. I got some, you get some wide sweeper turns. Um, you know, you're not worried about top end on a track like this. So let's hop into Laguna Seca real quick and just, and just check it and see if anything's way off. Sometimes you'll do this. Most cars, you know, you can generally probably 90% of the cars you can apply a tune like this to front wheel drive. Now the numbers aren't identical. Right, the spring numbers are going to look a little different based on your weight and things like that, but centering them up and stuff. Now, I didn't go into tires and all that. It's not. Make sure I'm in the view I want to be in. Gonna move around. Now you got to wait for the tire. Oh, see, like there, the brakes are they're wrong. I can already tell. I locked up the fronts. Turn turn in feels good though. I was able to hit the gas pretty hard coming out, so that felt pretty good. I really like the turn in. Turn in feels nice. As soon as I get the tires warmed up, I'll show you what I mean by the brakes. Oh, I just blew that turn. I was looking at my speed and my tires. <laughs> blew through the turn. So we get some telemetry up. I'll show you what we want to look for here. Oh man, those brakes are really bad. And I can't remember, I think in brakes for front wheel drive, I tend to go the other direction. You just put about 48%. So we'll look here, 30 PSI in both. You can see things aren't definitely aren't warmed up yet. And by the way, this is a car I'm, I'm getting ready to tune for my D-Class tunes. Another what I would call an, al an alternative to the Mini. Wait for my tires to get closer. Right now, though. Probably need to... Uh, wonder how close I am to getting warm. A little bit of understeer there. But I was on the gas pretty early. Not bad there. Still not quite... It takes a while to warm these tires up. I double shifted there. All right, we'll give it a few more turns and we'll pull our telemetry back up. I want to concentrate on how the feel is. What? It's like getting more understeer as they get warmer. <laughs> or I'm getting, or I'm driving worse. One of the two. That's pretty good. And what I'll probably do is because I feel like I'm getting just a little understeers, I'll probably lower the the front springs. The pounds on those front springs a little bit. See it right there, just a little turn in, but it's not bad. It does pick back up. It wants to try to steer out, but it kind of hangs in there. All right, let's look at our... Trying to get to the back to the telemetry here. Turn. Telemetry... Here's where you can see if, you know, I, I haven't really felt like I'm bottoming out anywhere. Maybe a little bit in there. 
I could stand to raise it an inch or two. But overall, that hasn't been too bad. I don't like this gearing. I'll have to play around with that. For a track like this, anyway. Oh, dang it, I just shut it off. See, right there, I do the front ends, the fronts lock up, so I definitely have too much. I don't know if it's too much to the front. I'm going to check that real quick. Well, hang on. Get the telemetry. Let's get back to our tires. That's what I want to look at. And then at the end of this straight, we should be able to tell. So I'm at 210 and 195. So if I hit this, let's see which one, which ones light up quicker. So 290, 270. It still looks like that's the front. Now there's one other way I can tell. Let me get the telemetry out of the way. I can let the tires get cool back down here. There they go. We'll do this in the next turn. I'll be able to tell more by when I trail break into this one. So I'll try and turn and break and see what happens. So the car just wants to go straight. It just it won't turn. So that means let's go in here. I'll show you what we do to fix that. So two things I want to change on this. I want to I want to take some weight, take some of that out to help with the oversteer. I also want to oh, also want to go up to more. I want a little bit more towards the rear on this one. So I'm going to go up to 54 here. Let's see if this... I think that hit the... You know, this might be going the wrong way. I don't think I can tell. I wish I, wish I could tell easier which way it was locking up. That was pretty close. Does it look like about the same to you guys? Look pretty close to me. That's pretty good. So it looks like they're locking up at about the same time. Oh, the back locks up just before the front. I don't know if you guys saw that. So a little bit too much of the back. I'm gonna, I want to try one more thing. So that's another good way you can look at the, the side view and see how they're stopping. You want to get them about the same. I mean, you want them to be, to be balanced. Um, and you're not jamming on the brakes like that. But I'm gonna do this. Let's go 49 the other way. I, it might be too much, but well, well I don't want to get those tires heated up too quick because that'll that'll affect it too. Tire temperature. Tire pressure, all those things can affect your braking, so. <laughs> that was dumb. <laughs> God. That's pretty close there. It looked like the back, still, I could go one more. So I think 48 is my optimal setting, and I think that's what I found on front wheel drives. Rear wheel drive seems to be 52 ish, and. If, and uh, Front wheel drive seems to be in the 48% range. Let me just see what it feels like on this last little deal here. Oh yeah. It started to just a little bit, but because I cut all kinds of corners there, but that feels pretty good. So anyway, so that that gives you an idea real quickly. Now I got a car that I could I could literally go run this car right now. I might play around with it a little more, maybe play with my gearing a little bit just for this track. Kind of get it straightened out. Like I said, I want to go one more on that. And then that's it. So I'm going to wrap it up with that one. Hopefully this gives you something that you can quickly tune a front wheel drive car, give you some of the basics of what, how I'll start out a front wheel drive car. And then from there you can just fine tune. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you got any other questions, if, I, if there's something I missed in here, something that, that didn't quite click, or maybe you didn't understand, uh, post them in the comments and I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you guys. Otherwise we'll catch you in the next one later.